Well, welcome back here to Po in the south of France. And now a chance for some extreme canoe slalom here in the Pyrenees. Totally different approach to slalom. And with me, my company is Bertrand Gutierrez. Hi. Excited yes. for the extreme canoeing? Yes, for sure. It's a different discipline. So it's completely different from Salam. The paddlers don't use the same boat. The boats are a little bit heavier because it's a plastic boat right now. So it's a race starting in line together. And the rule is simple to be first at the finish line. They are. Well, here we see the first two quarterfinals Alex de Ramon, Sofia Reynoso, and Alats. Aki Arrigui. A few of the paddlers were involved in the K1 women's event. Alors, on profite, hein, pour remercier tous ceux qui ont organisé Switch to the extreme. To our first quarterfinal, Alex Degamo, Sofia Rendi, Reynoso of Mexico, Alex Arrigue of Spain. So the athletes may not be specifically extreme kayakers, obviously. So what decisions would someone make for trying out the extreme, just to so, test their skills? Yeah, just normally you have to be in the team. So you have to, to participate in the World Cup, and then it's your choice if you, if you want to do it or not. Alex Dragomo for the home team. Already golden weekend for France with Lafont and Prigion taking gold and silver in the women's K1, but the extreme K1 underway. There we go. So there, there are six gates, six green gates. Uh, Alex Degramon was the quickest in the extreme trial runs. So you have to choose between the up on the left and all the up on the right. Looking in a good position, 2018 Junior World Champion. So they have to go in the middle of the course. So after the gate number six and before the gate number seven, they have to roll like this and then keep going faster than they can. So there is two up. So you choose between the up on the left or the up on the right. So you can green boat to on the left or the other right. This is a question of speeds now. The real <laughs> yes, battle going on. Can, it's okay, you can push your they seem to be having you can push with your rival with, with your paddle, but you, you can't hit for sure. The battle for the line, certainly a testy one, but all smiles in the boats. As see the winner, Mexican Reynoso, qualifying alongside De Cremont. Dropping a splash, and off they went. Just three in this first quarter final. Arrigue having been in these women's K1 event. Unfortunately, not able to make it through to the semi finals of the extreme K1. Ninth in the 
women's K1. Better news for Degramont and Reynoso, the winner from Mexico. We look to the second quarterfinal four this time. Hélène Alascano, Natasha Delessieux, Laura Pellissier, Chica, and Celia. On est avec Celia! Celia Foda of Morocco. A nurse by trade, and uh, considering some of the uh, battling qualities, she may need those skills come the finish. Laura Pellissier, Chica of a number of the Andorran team to make the oh, short trip to Po across the border. Natasha Delassou, part of the large Delassou paddling family. Miren Lascano from Spain. And Spain's Miren Lascano makes up our quartet from San Sebastian. Ready, the short trip go. from the Basque region certainly would have a great appetite for food in San Sebastian, the most Michelin restaurants for square feet, but now hungry for extreme K1 success. They have to choose between the up on the left or up on the right, and then going Well, that is a miscake for Laura Pellissier Chica. Unfortunately, NSC, meaning she is out of contention. Just two spots for the semi final. The big difference with Slalom, you can touch the gates if you want, but you have to pass the gate for sure. So if you miss the gate, you are disqualified. If you hit, you. Well, obviously, time not an issue here. Fastest paddler first. Lascano looking safely through to the semi finals. And Natasha Delosu looks to have joined her. And then Lascano. The winner, Delassou, will hope to avoid the disappointment of her brother Anatole in the men's K1 final. Some mistakes that saw him lose what would have been a great opportunity on home water for a medal. But his sister will have an opportunity to reach the final of the Extreme K1 after coming in second to Spain's Lascano. So next up in quarterfinal three, favorite likely for the gold in this extreme women's event, Alsu Minasova, who took top of the podium in Tassin, her second gold at a World Cup event. See Mariana Torres Breseno of Venezuela, all smiles at the start before the plunge. Lea Baldoni. Got some experience in the women's K1 semi final. And the favourite, Malsu Minasova, looking for a fourth World Cup Extreme K1 medal and trying to add to her two goals in Tassin in 2019 and 2020. And her compatriot, Daria Kuznetsova, make up our quartet. 
she actually managed to pick up the silver in behind Minnesota. So the Russians certainly the ones to focus on. So wants to focus on ahead of this quarterfinal. Pretty good start for the Russian. She's leading the run at the moment. Looking like no problems for Minnesota wearing the 23 bib. Yeah, good roll for everybody. I don't know what is the last boat. Maybe she stays stuck the first part. I don't know why. Oh, the first boat is Well, there's a huge problem because Minnesota looks yeah, to have think, yeah. fallen out of contention. A missed gate for the Tassin gold medalist. So, she had a big oh, advance. Yeah, she was so far ahead, maybe too relaxed in her favorite position. And uh, gold medal now very much up for grabs for the rest of the field as the Russian Minnesota incredibly misses out. Leah Baldoni with a superb win, the 19-year-old is a fi finalist at the Grand Prix at Poe in September's event. Pushing 18th, but now a winner in the quarterfinals to progress alongside Daria Kuznetsova. And maybe the Russian will take advantage of her compatriot's mistake to try and improve on the silver medal from Slovenia last month. Well, a bit of a shock there. She was so far ahead. We pretty much missed her disappearing off the charts. So we have uh, Lena Baldoni from Canada winning so, the Great final. performance for Baldoni. It looked all the world like Vinasova is riding clear into the semi finals. There's always shocks and surprises, and hers was missing a gate. Six qualified for the semi-finals, just two places remaining. In the final quarter-final, coming up with home hope, Roman Pigeon ready to battle. Snappers here taking in the fair here in Po. Sadly, no spectators here due to COVID restrictions as we see. Veronica Voshtova, Zulfia Savetova, and Roman Pigeon in the final quarter final. Roman Pigeon just edged out in the women's K1 final, following up her gold in Tassin with silver here in Po. From Russia, we have Sylvia Sapitova. Sylvia Sapitova, 27-year-old Russian. Hey, and much more comfortable Vitova. in the canoe. Check and Veronika Voshtova returns to the water. Ready, go! Oh, 
Rushtova finishing eighth in the women's K1 final as Plijon took silver. Now battling out in the extreme K1. Savitova looking to keep tabs. It wasn't a good start for the local Roman Plijon, but she is trying to push as fast as, as I can. Let's see during the roll. It's a really important part, and I think it's a bit tight on gate five, but I think she made it. Just roll. She's getting slightly stuck. Uh, Veronica Vostova, uh, 2019 world champion at Extreme K1. Certainly one to watch for the medals, especially with Minnesota crashing out. Hell check have a big advantage. And she's finishing a lot. She's heading. Well, Sabitova with a missed gate. Her stream K1 day over as Veronica Vostova takes the easy victory ahead of Romain Prigent. French women safely into the semi finals. So there's the final result. Vostova, 2019 Extreme K1 World Champion, in ahead of Roman Pigeon. And Savitova is going out. So here's the semi final lineup Alex Degamon, Milan Lascano of Spain, Natasha Delosu of France, and the Mexican Sofia. And then also the second, Ostova, Kuznetsova, Baldoni, and also Romain Prigion. So now the men's quarterfinals of the extreme canoe slalom. The starting lineup for the first two quarterfinals certainly Pedro Pepe Gonzalez taking the eye in the second quarterfinal with Pavel Egel showed up well in Tassin. Both had a very disappointed men's K1 semi-final. Missed Gates, seeing them fail to make the final. So an early opportunity to get some of that frustration out of their system. So the weather certainly improved in Po, the umbrellas away. What are you expecting ahead of this men's quarterfinal? Who do you have your eye on? I think we need to be careful about the Brazilian, Pepe Gonzalez. He's pretty good on it. But also Benjamin from France, really, really strong paddler. And for sure, the others, like Hegel, is pretty good as well. 
There's going to be a big fight. Certainly Russian contention in Tassin. As we see in the first quarter final, Benjamin Renia leading out Alex Baldoni Terence. Sarah Mandif and also Thomas Ukalovic of Croatia. Terence Sarah Mandif from Mauritius. So Mauritius represented here, it's certainly looking like a competitor aiming to enjoy himself. The one and only Benjamin R R R R R R from France. Est-ce que Benjamin Rennia vous fait un départ type slalom tranquillou à voir. Ready, go! So underway in this first quarter final. Certainly paddles flying all over as Rennia takes an early lead. Benjamin who made an impressive start and is leading. With a penalty for everyone. So a few disqualifications during the women's quarterfinals, but so far, this first quarterfinal, the men keeping themselves in contention, but it's Rania who is maintaining his early lead. He's a really strong paddler, Benjamin. Po native taking advantage of his knowledge of the course. Followed in by Croatian Lovic. It looks like he'll be joining the muscle man of France, Benjamin Renia. Well, if the kayaking doesn't work out, maybe the world's strongest man. But for now, the Frenchman easing his way into the semi-finals along with Kalovic of Croatia. So the second quarter final headliner Pedro Gonçalves with Frenchman Adrian Fischer, Czech Tomasz Sima, and Ireland's Tom Morley making up the quartet. Pedro Gonçalves, sixth in the Rio Games K1, the world bronze extreme K1 winner. And, from and also the reigning 2019 Extreme K1 overall World Cup champion. As the <laughs> certainly craziest of the canoeists making their way out for the Extreme. 
Ireland represented. So Adrian Fischer of France. Ready? Underway in the second quarter final. Pedro Gonzalez looking to make early headway. Yeah, Pedro is one of the best for that. Really strong. He won a lot of races. And he proved it today in Po. He's alone. Well, lonely but happy up top as there's a battle to join him in the semi finals. The battle between Zima, the Czech guy, and Adrian Fischer, the French. Adrian Fischer is doing C1 canoe normally and slalom, so it's a bit different if you compare to Zima. Who is practicing K1 all the time? And he will be second. Zima, second. Looks like Fischer has been disqualified. But uh, no doubts about the winner. The Tash gets a wee twizzle. And it's Pedro Gonzalez comfortably into the semi finals, accompanied by Tomas Zima of the Czech Republic. Zima already with a silver medal in his pocket after the K1 men's final. Pedro Gonzalez failed to make that final 10. But looking to take gold again after his golden run in the K1 Extreme in Tassin. Next up, quarterfinal three, Dario Cuesta with a very disappointed Boris Nevu, who crashed out of the men's K1 semi final. And he was expected certainly to push for a medal. So, a chance for some level of redemption. We see Nur Et Kadur of Morocco, Thomas Bersinger, who had an excellent run in the men's K1 final taking a brilliant bronze, the Argentinian, French-born Argentinian. Boris Nevu looks in better spirits than he was after the men's semi-final, in which he missed a gate to finish 18th of 20. And Dario Cuesta himself looking to make an impression on this K1 Extreme event. Quarter-final. Yeah, it's going to be a big battle on this quarter final. A lot of strong paddler between Boris Neveu, Spanish, and Thomas Versace from Argentina. Yeah, 
One stuck right at the back. Moment. Ah, it's yes. Daniel uh, Cuesta taking the lead. I think he just missed the gate. Boris Nadal just missed the gate, so I think it will be disqualified. Well, it is truly turning into a nightmare weekend for Boris Nevo. You would have expected so much from a weekend in Po. Yeah, miss, miss the gate number four. is disqualified. Boris Nevo. It's a big battle. Between Thomas Versinger and I think he will win this quarter of final. Uh, out clear and enjoying his run, Bersenier. Bersenier taking the victory, followed up by Dario Cuesta. Another forgetful, forgettable time on the Po water for Boris Nevo. As you see there, NSC disqualified for missing a gate as Nur Kadur. Finishes above him, but not enough to progress. Well, a tough time for Bobo Nevo, the 2014 World K1 champion. He's going to Tokyo 2021, but ending 2020 season in disappointment. I told you earlier, you have to be qualified for, for this World Cup to participate, but I think for this one, it's not true. So it's like a decision from the federations. I suppose the COVID restrictions mean that it's more likely to be a yeah, bit more open. Yeah, and also sometimes the federation decide to take some orders for these races. You can see a man who knows his fate before the race is over. So safely through Passager and Dario Cuesta joining Benjamin Venia, Galovic of Croatia, Pedro Gonçalves of Brazil, Tomas Sima. And just two spots left for the semi finals. Here we are, the final quarter final. And uh, chance of redemption for the Russian Pavel Pegel. He was disqualified from the semi finals of the Tassin Extreme K1 meet at Pepe 1. As you see the Dutch, Joris Otten. Already shaking and ready to go, Pavel Pegel. He looks to reclaim a medal. 2018 Extreme K1 overall World Cup champion. Helen Friedensen went earlier in the men's K1 semi final. And from C1 to up 17th in that is Wojtek Eger. Makes up our quartet. Ready? Oh, the American guy lost his paddle, so he finished with his hand. It's a really special run from this American. Well, that is some commitment to the sport. I suppose he has to go. He has to go down the river somehow. <laughs> yes, but I think it's a really good. Really impressive today. Well, I think we can forgive him missing the gate considering he has no paddle, but he certainly gets a gold medal for effort. Well, it's certainly showing how important the paddle is to <laughs> yes. the canoe and kayaker. He can be first for the start now. <laughs> 
He's certainly giving a different idea of what Extreme K1 could be. Maybe, yes. maybe taking the paddles away might, you know, change up the sport a little bit. Yeah. And finish this course without paddle. It's a big challenge. But the big question is, will he finish the race with a boat? We don't know how far he's going to go. Yes, yes. He might just go for a swim. Well, up top, a more uh, traditional run, you might say, for Pavel Hegel, as he's comfortably into the semi-finals, joined. Uh, it's, <laughs> he's certainly a memorable run. He's certainly getting plenty of exercise. Well, certainly be a popular competitor, if not successfully, into the semi-final. Well, plenty of laughs and smiles provided by the American Caelan Fredrickson. But unfortunately, not enough to qualify as Pavel Igel through. And along with him, happily joined by. Yeah, Asia joining him. Potem not making it. Well, here we go. You see. The hands go up, but do you know what? Look at him straight away, straight away. He just put his hands in the water and said, who needs a paddle? Yeah. Have you ever tried that, Bertrand? I tried one time, yeah. How did it go? Fun. It's pretty fun. <laughs> I didn't lose my, uh, lost my paddle, so <laughs> it's a good stop. <laughs> it's just great watching him still battling away, eventually left behind, but Certainly showing his fighting spirit and uh, the fun side of the sport. Well, it's quite difficult to be uh, overshadowed, uh, overshadowed, I should say, when you win the event, but uh, certainly the quarterfinal, the star of the show, Friedrichsen, but it is Egel and the Czech Republic's Egel who are through to the semi final lineup. He was second during the race, and he... He certainly didn't look happy concurrent. about that, did he? No smiles from the Russian. Very serious. Well, we had both sides of it, the serious competitive edge and the jovial, paddleless performance from the young American. So here is our semi final lineup Benjamin Renia, Pedro Gonzalez, Tomas Zima, along with Croatia's Tomas Ukalovic. Pavel Egel will lead out Dario Cuesta, Tomas Passenger, and Vojtek Egel of the Czech Republic. So, Blake, can you miss it? And we're back with the women's semi finals in this Extreme Canoe Slalom World Cup 2 COVID hit sport. Just two World Cup events at the end of the year, but already major success to have been able to put together the international canoeing competition in Tassin. It now imposes a lot of. Congratulations to organizers and federations. And here we are with the first semi final Alex Devermont, Spain's Miren Lascano, France's Natasha de la Sue, and Mexican Reynoso. Mexican, a double bronze medalist in Lima, the 2019 Pan American Games, one of them in Extreme K1. From Spain, Miren Lascano. Miren Lascano competed in the C1 European final. She posted a seventh place finish. And for France, we have Alex Degramo. Alex Degramo. Beat it at the 2018 Ready. Junior World Championships in Evrea. 18th in the K1. 
Really good start from Alex. The start is really important for his discipline. Mistake Ramon and Lazcano who take an early lead, but now get a bit stuck. Certainly the Spaniards. Really fighting hard, and Lascano seems to have slipped through the gap. She starts, she stays stuck on the first up, and she's last right now. It's a big fighting, and I think the first boat is just missing the gate number five. Yes, she's disqualified. That Natasha is apparently first from France. Well, the Telesus have certainly had an excellent run here in Po, although Anatol couldn't quite convert in the men's K1 after he and Marjorie in her C1 heats at uh, being the quickest in Po. And her sister Natasha Delassou looks to have confirmed the final place for her compatriot Alex Degramont missing a gate and a big disappointment after her strong run in this competition was the quickest in the free heats. That's Miren Lascano. Not many smiles though. It was certainly a real battle in this semi-final. Certainly that just after the first drop Boats really fighting it out. And in the end, as we see, confirmation Lascano leading Delasu into the final. Sofia Renoso out. But more importantly for France, disappointment. Degramont, who'd shown her aptitude for this extreme sport, missing out after missing a gate. Second semi final, though we do seem to have got news that the Spaniard Lascano has actually been disqualified. Try and get confirmation of that, but it looks as if Francis Delasso will be joined by Sofia Reynoso of Mexico. And which two from this quartet will make it to the final? Canada's Lea Baldoni to make an impact, the 19-year-old Daria Kuznetsova will certainly feel this is a big chance for a medal. She took silver in Tassin. Veronika Vostova of the Czech Republic. Blowing kisses, will she be all smiles come to finish? So the green lights and the drop into the water. It's a quick start from Kuznetsova. It's a real whack, oh. though, it looked like from Vostova. It's a big fight on this first section. Yeah, well, certainly. Oh, that's a big fight. And it's Vostova who's missed a gate. Her aggressivity not working out, it seems. I think you can hear the announcer. I don't think he's wrong that it's a complete mess out there. But they bounced into the water and then just all hell broke loose. So it has to be said, uh, this may be at times a more fun and experimental sport, but there's uh, certainly a lot of grit and determination. That's because Netsova now has missed a gate. Well, they're all dropping like flies in this second semi final. And Leah Baldoni oh, has also gate. missed a gate. Oh. Who's going to be left? Well, I'm not sure exactly, but uh, it's tough to really pick 
Who's going to make it through? Is, well, that looked like Metsuma struggling hard. She gets stuck. But I, actually I, I guess, is it fastest first? Yes, between those if, if you put it into the gate, it's the fastest. <laughs> Well, so as long as someone else misses your gate, you've got a chance. Well, we'll try and clean up what was. Well, it's Roman Prijon, who at the moment appears to be the winner. But uh, we're going to have to wait because there's a wee bit of confusion, certainly with the uh, results we have in front of us, which don't seem to correlate with what we've seen so far. Uh, no wonder the judges may be having a closer look at the absolute carnage of this women's extreme semi-final too. And it's Lea Baldoni who looks to have been given the victory. And Veronika Vojtova, who was the first to miss a gate, has actually found herself in the final. Well, huge disappointment for Tassin K1 Extreme silver medalist Kuznetsova, who joins Milasova in being booted out. And Roman Prigent, who took silver in the K1 earlier today, is also out of the competition. Drama and excitement. And we've still got the final to look forward to. Join us for that later. Too long, Vojtova, Baldoni, Reynoso, and Francis Delosu will battle it out for the medals. As we await the men's semi final, will it be as boisterous as the women's semis? Join us for that very soon. So as we try and work out exactly who's in the final, here is the lineup: Moshtova, Delesu, Renanoso, and Baldoni making the final. Semi-final one was a little bit clearer. Semi-final two was an absolute battle of laughs. And the uh, real fighting spirit brought out. And will we see the same in the men's semi-finals? See the first semi, favourite Pedro Gonçalves alongside Carlois, Benjamin, Renia, Tomas Zima, who picked up a medal in the K1. Also, Luka Lovic of Croatia. Yeah, it's going to be a huge semi final. These four boards are really strong. Yeah, we certainly see that. And Tomas Sima just plugging himself into his canoe. You mentioned earlier the uh, weight difference of the boats, these uh, different kettle of fish from the K1. Yeah, sure. It's, it's really different from the slalom. It's heavier, and if you never really practice, it's really different, it's weird. So, Pedro is practicing a lot. Certainly, Pedro Gonzalez is a big proponent of the sport, that trying to grow it, and uh, I guess the dream for Pedro and proponents of K1 Extreme is to try and make it to the Olympics. Certainly the rough and tumble of extreme canoe slalom. No place for the timid. Pedro Gonçalves looking to follow up his World Cup gold in Ljubljana. Tassin. Certainly a favourite here, but Benjamin Venia will look to join him in the final. They're all really packed together in a queue. Gonçalves. 
chasing behind the they leading really Frenchman. Fast. They are really fast. And Pedro just beat, beat wow. Benjamin. Great choice of gate there to fight to the front. Position could be key in the final in terms of where they're dropping off from. Nobody missed the gate at this moment. We will see the, the roll. Really good roll from Pedro. It's really wanting to make it smooth and quick, so you're back yeah, up you in have to it. decide the good timing to go really fast and don't lose much time. And he did very well. Oh, Benjamin Lignard just missed the gate. I'm not sure about that. Let's see the judges. Well, we've already decide. seen in the extreme that you have to be patient to know what happened, yes. as we saw with the women's it's semi-finals. Hard. It's hard to judge from the, from the bank. So we'll wait and see if that is a confirmed missed gate. But at the moment, no problems for Pedro Pepe Gonzalez. Renier did make it out front. He looks happy, so... <laughs> looked like he might have got a whack on the arm. So a little bit of confusion come the finish line. Yeah, I think the judges will decide. At the moment, it's Pedro as the winner, but certainly great. It would be, in a way, a nice if Verania made it through because the battle between the Frenchman and the Brazilian was exhilarating. Well, we see the uh, semi-final says Gonçalves and Lukalovic of Croatia through. Uh, we'll wait to see exactly what happened because there's some confusion, but for the moment, Benjamin Venia has a nervous wait to see if he has in fact made the final or not. So the second semi-final, we'll wonder to see if this is any clearer than the previous two semis we've seen in the women's semi-final two and the men's semi-final one. Still looking for clarification, but Hoshtek Ega calling in for a big performance. Pavel Ega, the 2018 overall Extreme K1 World Cup champion, looking to avoid the fate he had in Tassin. But he was disqualified in the semi-final stage. Thomas Rassanger has looked good over the weekend, a bronze at K1. And all smiles from Dario Cuesta, looks right ready for the extreme battle ahead. Well, first, you have to get over your fear of heights to drop down. And off they go here at the World Cup in Po. And it is just a sandwich of boats. They start like a grab, <laughs> big, big grab, and they are going through together. They're going hell for leather, that's for sure. A lot of missing gates, we can see. I guess you might want to take the left-sided gate because then you get the current to try and go faster than if you take the second one. But it's interesting seeing what decisions yeah, the paddlers make. If everybody going to the right, the, the best decision is going to the left. They're battling away, but Thomas Passager missing a gate. But as we've seen, there's been a big confusion at times whether their gates were missed or not, so we'll wait to see the clarification. It doesn't look good for Passager. Last up. So far, Dario Cuesta out in front. Just popping through, Egel. 
And now he's really battling for that first place, almost riding the boat of Cuesta. The two of them side by side. I'm not sure Cuesta is quite happy with uh, the attentions of Egal. I think he did hit him a little bit. <laughs> He was looking for maybe a, ca a camera head. Eagle really going to try and get a better position come the final, but it looks like Dario Cuesta. Oh, wow. Well, certainly you can see why he wasn't so happy, but he's delighted to see the result blooded from this most extreme of the semi finals. But the uh, Spaniard. I would say safely through, but I wouldn't say it's uh, <laughs> quite the safest place to have been. Pavel Egel joining him with Messager and Egia missing out. It's a real fight. It's a real MMA on water. Cuesta braving a broken nose to make his way into the men's extreme final, along with Pavel Egel. We certainly got two highly anticipated finals to come up very soon. We'll be back with the men later on today as we prepare for the women's extreme CSL final. Salves and as seen Benjamin Arenia restored to qualifying position after reversed penalty for uh, what had initially been said to be a missed gate. So the men's final Egel, Arenia, Cuesta and Gonzalez, but it's time for the women's final. Well, we seem to be missing a boat. It's turning up a little bit late. Kostova finally making her way to the starting line. Certainly don't want to be starting late in the rest of the field. <laughs> She heard Sofia Reynoso of Mexico, 24 years of age, a double bronze medalist at the 2019 Pan American Games. She took that in K1 and Extreme K1 in Lima. Can she find her way to a medal here on a World Cup stage? Natasha Delosu hoping to bring some medal joy to the Delosu family after the disappointment for Anatole in the men's K1 final. And Lea Aldoni, just 19 years of age. Great opportunity to enjoy this as the mask is tucked away. She may be late to the start. Veronika Vostova will be aiming for a golden finish. Ready, go! So underway here. Certainly the world number 17 in K1, Vostova would be favorite here. She's the 2019 world champion in K Extreme K1. And looking to make an early start. Oh, Veronica is really have a really advantage on this run. 
She's really blasting away, and it looks like gold is all but hers as long as she keeps herself focused. She was late for the start, but she's not late anymore. She's certainly turned it around. The real disappointment for Reynoso, struggling at the back. Late in registering. But first down the course. Yeah, she's all on, and she will win. The second place. It's a fight. The moment. Still a silver and bronze up for grabs. Looks like it could be a really good. Well, Natasha Delosu missing gate eight, and now it's a battle for silver. Or bronze between Baldoni and Reynoso, but it's gold for Vojtova. And it looks like the teenager from Canada has taken silver. Should be an amazing result ahead of the bronze medalist at the 2019 Pan American Games. Reynoso, well, that is terrific from Baldoni, considering the competition in this final. Frustration for Natasha Delassou. It's been a tough weekend for the family. They'll hope Marjorie in the C1 tomorrow will have better fortune. Uh, Vojtova, the 2019 Extreme K1 World Champion, showing exactly why. Late to the start, but too much power, pace, and precision for the competitors. champion and now she's a World Cup gold medalist. Congratulations, Veronica. A good race. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was super for me because the course is really hard. I think so hard as in Prague. But yeah, it's great. You enjoy this race, don't you? You enjoy the extreme slalom. Yeah, I feel more better as uh, in the morning during my uh, slalom course. But yeah, it's cross is so uh, all time just fun. Yeah. And it seems like the athletes are really relaxed and they enjoy it because it's a relaxed atmosphere, is that right? Yeah, yeah I think so. But I had a little bit stress, stressful before my race because we change our boat, so I go on the on the sand lines in quickly. So yeah, yeah, I'm happy. It didn't change your flag, phase <laughs> you. you. Congratulations, well done. Thank you very much. A late change of boat, not uh, bringing too much trouble. Just like Joe Biden starting shakily, but ending up a winner. As it looks like in the US presidential elections. But back here in Po, the twizzling moustached musketeer of Brazil looking to bring his Brazilian flair to the extreme men's final. Certainly the favorite after his Tassin success. Also the reigning overall World Cup champion in this discipline, Pavel Egel, was the 2018 overall champion. Missed out on a final against the Brazilian. 
and looking for a chance here. But Benjamin Alenia has made it, but it looks like Dario Cuesta, maybe that blooded nose means that he's... Oh, no. Again, we have a latecomer. And, uh, yeah, it's great for Dario Cuesta to have joined us. Maybe seeking medical attention. Oh, you can see it's just above his uh, eyebrow where he's been caught. So he'll certainly be wanting to keep away from the Russian. Yes. <laughs> But also they need to take the boat and put on the, the start line. Well, Cuesta will hope it's a good omen. Postova was the last to set up and took gold. Although this the top quality really in the world for K1 Extreme men's in this final. There we go. Oh, that was a really good start for Regna. Frenchman taking an early advantage, but getting stuck in the gates. And flying through is the Russian. Dario Cuesta late to the show, and now first to miss a gate. And it's the Russian Egel who's bursting away. He took the earlier gate and really used the current to his advantage. Yeah, there, there, there is a, a lot of penalty. Have to wait in the mix up, but Pedro Gonzalez trying to maintain his supremacy, but oh, I'm not sure if he missed that gate. Yeah, I think so. Let's see the decision of the judges. Well, it's just absolute carnage out there. It certainly is a fun atmosphere, but when the competition begins, it's serious business. But it's a powerful performance. A royal Russian performance from Pavel Egel. He was so frustrated in Slovenia when he was disqualified in the semi-final. But congratulated by the man who won the last World Cup gold in Tassin. And it's the Russian who will receive the gold medal this time around. I'm just waiting for confirmation because I think the uh, rest of the final missed gates. And it looks as if it might be Rania to take a silver. Dario Cuesta has taken bronze ahead of Pedro Gonzalez. Well, a big shock there. I mean, the Brazilian certainly had competition for the gold, but you wouldn't have expected him to walk away with nothing. Well, it shows nothing can be taken for granted. And it's turning into a very disappointing Saturday in Po for Gonzalez. Failing to make it out to the semi-finals in the K1. And now going home medalist from his one of his favorite events, the Extreme K1. It's Pavel Egel came from the back of the quartet to burst through, to dominate and have his golden moment in the south of France in the Pyrenees. Silver for the Frenchman, Renia. Dario Cuesta with a brilliant bronze ahead of the Brazilian.
So a superb day here in Po. The K1 event. Success for France. As we hear from our K1 Extreme winner, Pavel Egel. Does it matter if you're not so fast at the start? It's you can make it up during the race. Uh, yes, uh, globally you need to adapt on race. I see three three guys go to right, and they happy on gate three. I go to left, and uh, yes, and and push. <laughs> you enjoy these races, don't you? You you do them every every event, really. Yeah, for me it's how I enjoy uh, after normal normal racing. Today not good, and it's uh, spent spend my power. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you've got a gold medal now, so you can take that back to Russia. Congratulations. Thank you. Merci. So a fantastic day here in Po. Start with Navi Zeliano for taking gold in the women's K1. The men's event. Martin Tugud of Switzerland, and in the extreme. The women's event, brilliant goal for Vostova, the reigning world Extreme K1 champion. And in the men's final, Pavel Egel recovering from semi-final disqualification in Tassin last month to make it a golden moment in Po ahead of Renea Dario Cuesta. The only shot, Pedro Gonçalves failing to medal. Fantastic day of canoeing here from Po. Thanks to Bertrand from myself. Thanks for joining us. Join us tomorrow for the C1 Women and Men's Finals. Until then, goodbye.